million ways to die in the West is about as funny as being diagnosed with cancer. Not for lack of trying, not because of a low budget or bad actors or bad cinematography, but because the man in charge simply wasn't able to make a good film. That is what makes this film so interesting. Most of the films I talk about suck because the director doesn't have complete control over the project. Films like The Amazing Spider-Man 2 or Transformers 4 suck because they are products made by studios to sell video games and toys and all kinds of crap. This film was made by Seth MacFarlane. He is the writer, the director, the star, the producer. He did everything. Everything! I can't even imagine his world. I mean, he has this movie, which is all encompassing. I mean, you're acting all day, you're then between takes having to go back and rewatch that very take on playback to see how it went, and then deciding on all these things. Plus, you're in pre production for the next day's work, plus, you're looking at dailies from the previous day's work, plus, he's got two pilots that just got picked up. Plus, he's doing full-time as, you know, executive producer and 15 voices on two television series that are already running. So, I don't know. I'm guessing he's a crystal meth addict. He had complete creative control over this project. There is no one to blame but Seth MacFarlane. Everyone else brought their A-game. The actors are good. The score is fine. The cinematography is beautiful. The effects are good. But the writing and directing, not so much. Sorry. Sorry, my fucking phone is on. This whole review is basically directed at Seth himself. Not at corporate America or Hollywood producers. This is at Seth. This isn't a bitter review because Seth isn't an Adam Sandler. He actually genuinely cares about his films and he tries. Whether you like him or not, he does try and he is capable of being funny. Plus, he is an extremely talented guy. He can write, direct, sing, dance, write music. He understands animation and film. He does everything himself and while he is very hit or miss, sometimes he hits. I'm afraid I have some very bad news. Your wife's gonna be a vegetable. You'll have to bathe her, feed her, and care for her the rest of her life. Oh my god. No, no, no. I, I'm just kidding. She's dead. Family Guy is very hit or miss. Ted is very hit or miss. Seth is a guy who throws everything at the wall and sees what sticks. This is less of a mean review and more of a, hey Seth, here's what you did wrong. Just so you know for next time. Because I am now an accomplished award-winning director which means I can give other directors advice. I'm better than you. So please, Seth, if you're watching this, take my advice. Listen to me. I don't think you're the death of cinema. This is an honest, entertaining review of why this film doesn't work. It's a critical and financial flop, and I'm about to tell you why, Seth. So just relax and enjoy, all right, buddy? That being said... Hi. You're being sent this video because... Someone wants to know what the fuck you were thinking. What the fuck was going through your head? What did you think was going to happen? Are you just a fucking idiot? Do you just not think? What the fuck were you thinking? That's why they're sending you this video, because it absolutely fucking baffles them that you did something so fucking retarded. Seth MacFarlane's giant ego. Seth MacFarlane thinks he's hot shit. I'm gonna tell you right now, you are not a leading man. You don't have charisma. As a matter of fact, you're pretty unlikable. Comedies are very much reliant on the lead star, or the lead duo. You are not capable of playing a charismatic, interesting, down-to-earth person. The main character in this movie is an asshole, and he's unlikable. You don't have to make him a complete idiot, but when you make him into a cynical asshole, everyone starts to hate him. Doc, I have a fever of 102. Oh, you need a donkey kicking. You, you know our pastor has shot two people? Our pastor. No. No. Honest to God, shot a guy in a duel, and then went back and killed the guy's teenage son because he was afraid he would kill him out of revenge. By the way, look at this. See those guys over there? The guys who work in the silver mines? See what they're eating? Ribs doused in hot sauce. They eat hot, spicy foods every meal of the day. You know why? Why would I want to follow this character? Why would anyone want to listen to a cynical a Oh, wait. I could see other actors portraying this character and making them likable. Or at least interesting to watch. But Seth just isn't good at acting. I'm sorry, Seth. You can play cartoon characters really well, but when you have to be a real person, it doesn't work. This is what separates the greatest comedians of all time from 
pack pieces of shit. Let's look at Kevin James and Chris Farley. Kevin James is essentially the new Chris Farley, except Kevin James stinks. He's not funny, he's not charismatic, and so he only relies on being fat. Hey, I'm the fat guy. Watch me slam into things and fall. <laughs> Chris Farley was a much better comedian, and he could make scenes that weren't that funny, really funny. Our new brake pads are really cool. You're not even gonna believe it. Like, um, let's say you're driving along the road with your family, and you're driving along, la la la, woo, and then all of a sudden there's a truck tire in the middle of the road, and you hit the brakes. Whoa, that was close. <laughs> Now let's see what happens when you're driving with the other guy's brake pads. You're driving along, you're driving along, and all of a sudden the kids are yelling from the back seat, I gotta go to the bathroom, Daddy! Not now, damn it! Truck tire! I can't stop! Help! Help! There's a cliff! And your family's screaming, Oh my God, we're burning alive! No, I can't feel my legs! In comes a meat wagon! Wee -oo, wee -oo, wee -oo. And the medic gets out and says, Oh my God! New guy's in the corner puking his guts out. <laughs> all because you want to save a couple extra pennies. That scene was all in the performance. It wasn't in the writing, it wasn't in the directing. Seth MacFarlane is Dull. And it's not because he's lazy. It's just because he's not good at it. It isn't like an Adam Sandler who's just lazy. Adam Sandler is so much more talented in this field than Seth MacFarlane is. Adam Sandler just doesn't give a shit. Have you ever seen Adam Sandler actually try in a movie? When he tries, he's really good. It's just trying takes Effort. And that's why Seth MacFarlane trying to be the leading man in this movie is kind of commendable. That being said, his giant ego blinds him to the fact that he's not a very good leading man. And that there are so many more talented actors around him who could make this film better. And yet he chooses to focus on himself. You are surrounded by a lot of talented people. Use them! You don't have to do everything. A large part of filmmaking, believe it or not, is teamwork. And when you do everything yourself, sometimes the movie doesn't come out great. I usually complain about directors not having any control over their projects, but this is the exact opposite. He has too much control over his project. And so there's no voice of reason to say that this scene doesn't work, or this scene isn't funny, or this scene is unnecessary. And that's why this movie is two hours long of just bullshit. Scenes go on forever. Oh. Holy shit, this scene is still going. We get it! Wasted talent. There are so many incredibly talented, funny actors in this movie that are completely wasted. I'm not saying Sarah Silverman is, you know, the next Louis C.K. I don't think she's that funny, but there's no reason for a talented, female comedian to do nothing in a film but say sexual things. Ooh, ooh, I had to give a blowjob. No, it's okay, it's okay. That is all she does. Her character isn't interesting, her character isn't funny. She's just there to say, This one man wanted me to smoke a cigar and then ash on his balls while I'm jerking him off, and I'm like, what? Can I do all that? <laughs> <laughs> Here are two incredibly talented, funny people that are given nothing to do in this movie. Their only kind of subplot is that they have to have sex. And the joke is she works at a whorehouse, yet she doesn't want to give up her virginity to her boyfriend until they are married because they're Christian. 
This is a joke that gets old after about 20, 30 seconds. So maybe if you had developed it, made it interesting, made it funny, I would have cared. But no, she's just there to say sexual things. And he's just there to say silly things and dance. And all of this leads up to... I'm really horny right now. <laughs> Let's go in the shade and fuck. And that's it. That's the end of their plot. That was really worth the 20 minutes of fucking screen time you took up, Seth. Thank you so much. Listen, the, the Old West prostitute is a, 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 a therapist, a friend, a shoulder to cry on, a bartender, and a whore. So that's a lot. It's and a then, lot. um, you know. Responsibility. Big responsibility kind of, like, keeps... Keeps everybody happy. There is something where he, he, I think he truly tr is truly in love with Ruth, and um, he, all he wants to do is respect her. I'm really horny right now. <laughs> there are talented actors in this movie who are literally in it for five seconds. <laughs> what? Why was Ryan Reynolds in this movie? Was it supposed to be funny? Oh look, it's Ryan Reynolds and he got shot. Was that supposed to defy my expectations or make me laugh? Or should I sub what? <laughs> so was that funny? Was that clever? It was just a reference to a thing and it didn't fit in this film at all. It was just there to be stupid. Do you really expect to win me over because you have a cameo in there? Who gives a shit? Famous actors show up just to have references. Here's a reference to Back to the Future. It's not funny. They don't do anything with it. You're just supposed to laugh because look, it's Doc Brown and he has the DeLorean and we know what it is, but this guy doesn't. And he says Great Scott because he said Great Scott and Back to the Future. Isn't that funny? Great Scott! It isn't funny. So here's this incredibly talented cast and all of their scenes had to be cut down or cut out. Why? To make more time for Seth MacFarlane. We need more boring scenes of people talking. There's a whole scene that got cut out of the movie where mm -hmm. basically they're they're all they're all at a funeral and and the cause of death was a splinter actually that other doctor scene was was i'm kind of upset that didn't make it in the movie if it was funny then why'd you cut it out of the movie <laughs> the technical side to making a comedy slash lack of authenticity one thing this movie really could have had going for it even if it's not a very funny movie, if it had been a good western, I would have enjoyed it. Problem is, even though the set design is really good, even though the cinematography is really good, Seth MacFarlane messed up the post-production. And so what should look like a really gritty western ends up looking like a TV show. There's a show premiering on the History Channel about, like, I don't know, the, the Alamo or something, and it's Bill Paxton in it. It's a TV show, and it looks... So much better than this movie. Look at the costumes, look at the sets, they're so detailed and beautiful. But there's no grit, there's no film grain. I can make this shot look better, ready? Wow, it looks like a western. If I had felt like I was watching a western, this would have been a better film. And don't say some shit like, the film is not supposed to look like a western, because it's a silly comedy. Hey, why don't you watch an Edgar Wright film? Shaun of the Dead is a very good comedy, but it's also a very good zombie movie. Hot Fuzz is a very funny movie as well, but it's also a very good action movie. It has all the tropes and the look of an action film. And it makes those scenes so much funnier when they make fun of action films. In Shaun of the Dead, the, the close-up montages were kind of sort of making fun of action tooling up montages in a way of taking quite mundane actions and and the idea was in Shaun of the Dead that you you have all these mundane actions in the first half and you finally build up to the final one which is a gun tooling up montage then in Hot Fuzz the idea was to subvert that by taking the most boring parts of police work like paperwork and making it uh, super stylized and sort of approaching it in the way that Michael Bay or Ridley Scott or Tony Scott would, but that was the idea of taking the boring parts of the job and fetishizing them. I feel like I'm watching vacation footage at some kind of resort that's western themed. Like I'm in a tourist attraction or something and everyone's playing dress up and playing pretend. I don't feel like I'm actually in the west. Everything feels like a set. Even when they're in the middle of the desert and it clearly isn't a set, 
It still looks like a set. If a comedy is edited right and directed right, it could be very funny. Just look at an Edgar Wright movie. Those are flawless. Drinking ah. beer pubs. <coughs> Shall we? Or even a Mel Brooks movie. You could either make the film look really authentic, or you can go the opposite side of the spectrum and make the film look nothing like the films it's parodying. Look at Monty Python and the Holy Grail. That movie looks like total shit, but that's what makes it so funny. They don't even ride horses. The lack of authenticity makes it work. Victory is mine. Here is a film in the middle. Kinda wants to be a western, but at the same time, it doesn't want to be a western because if it's too much like a western, then it isn't funny. What the hell is lighting them? The moon? They even fucked up lighting. One of my favorite things about the western genre is how they choose to light every scene, especially in the dark. There are so many creative ways to light scenes in western film. But then here's a film where just, it looks boring. I want you to go out in the desert at night. You can't see shit. How much more effective would this scene have been if it was lit by a campfire? I know these may seem like little things, but little things are what makes movies go from being good to being great. But no, it's studio lighting. They stand in there on a set, and then they color correct it to make it a little bit more blue. And that's a goddamn shame, because this film has tens of millions of dollars behind it. And it's a shame that even though they shot this in a desert, it still looks like a set. It's just a waste. There is nothing dynamic about the way this film is shot. Even though there's so many creative things you could do. Again, going back to Edgar Wright, or even King Candy, which I made. You could use editing and lighting, and just little tricks to make things funny. Even music cues. What if I actually started donating to charity? Then maybe people would start respecting me again. Then I had another thought. I could literally go on for hours about how editing and lighting and sound make scenes funny. But I don't think Seth understands these things. The, 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 these silver miners would go down into the mines, they would work all day, they would inhale all this poison gas, and it would dull their taste buds. So all they could taste were hot, spicy foods, and that's all they would eat. And so it would cause all these in, intestinal issues, and it would just destroy their guts. And, uh... And, and, you know, so that be, that became like a, like, God, there's, there's got to be something that we can do with that. <laughs> and that's why this movie's so boring to look at, despite how much money was thrown at this film. This scene isn't funny. You know why? Because the sound design isn't good. And they just shift the ah! Ah! It's funnier in the trailer. Ah! Ah! That went south so fast! Ah! A few tweaks in post-production, a few lighting changes, a few different decisions made by people could have made this film better. But no, Seth MacFarlane has to do everything, even though he doesn't understand what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Not a compelling story. Some people could say that he didn't want to be funny. He just wanted to make a western. And if you're gonna say that this movie was just an excuse for him to make a western, then it's a pretty bad western. There's a guy. He lost his girlfriend. And then a badass from out of town comes in. And he has a girlfriend. And the girlfriend uh, is abused by him. And then she meets up with him. And they they bond and then they realize that they love each other and then they have to fight the their ex-boyfriend slash girlfriend slash husband slash wife and then Django comes and murders someone <laughs> pretty goddamn boring if you ask me so my question is if this story was so not compelling then why are so many scenes spent just telling the story thing about a comedy is if the story isn't good 
Most of the time, that comedy doesn't give a shit. The story is basically a loose framework so that they can make set pieces. Horrible Bosses is about three guys who want to kill their boss. Alright, that's a story. But that whole plot is just a framework so that they can go into houses and mess with shit or get into car chases. There aren't long, drawn-out scenes of people walking and talking about nothing but the plot. Oh. Oh, Edward, hey. What's going on? Oh my god. Albert, you look terrible. Oh, wow, there's that confidence boost I need. Thanks a lot. How you doing, buddy? Well, honestly, I'm a little worried about you. I haven't seen you in town in a week and a half, and, you know, it seems like you're just staying in and sleeping all day. I, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't stay home all day. I go out. You know, you know what I did on Tuesday? I went out to Charlie Blanche's ranch, and I paid him the money I owe him so he won't shoot me in the fucking face. I did that. That's going out. Okay, well, that's not really what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, look... Here's the truth, all right? I just feel like I need to stay here with my parents. You know, they're not gonna be around much longer, and, and I just wanna be able to give back all the love and affection that I got growing up. These scenes aren't funny or interesting. They don't even crack jokes in most of these scenes. And if they do, they're just one-off lines that aren't very funny. Sorry about that. It's kind of a regular occurrence around here. Really? Yeah. Hey, pretty fast hands back there. Oh, <laughs> I guess you're a real hero. Me? Yeah, no. No, I'm not the hero. I'm the guy in the crowd making fun of the hero's shirt. That's who I am. Oh. Hey, look who's here! Who's this? This is Plugger. Hey, Plugger. So that, uh, that was your brother in there, huh? Yeah, Lewis. He's always been a little rambunctious. Yeah, he seems like a great guy. I'm, I'm uh, Albert, by the way. Anna. You guys just got into town? Yeah. Welcome to our awesome town. Thanks. Lewis and I just came out from Kansas City. Oh, Kansas. No, it's in Missouri. Oh, right, that's annoying and weird. We were wanting a change, so we came out to the frontier looking to build a farm. Oh, that's what I do. Really? Yeah, I got a farm about two miles from here. Oh, cattle? Uh, no, sheep. Oh. Yep. Well, that's gonna be fulfilling work, though, right? Uh, yeah, it's great. It's like being a dog walker for 150 really stupid dogs. <laughs> <laughs> These scenes are meant to develop the characters. Like, what the fuck? We came here to laugh! We don't care about this boring love story that we've seen a thousand times. Show us something funny! We know it's going to happen! But if you make me laugh in between these boring scenes, then maybe I'll give a shit! There's something about filmmaking I don't think Seth understands, and that is pacing. Every scene should be important, but at the same time, every scene should be entertaining. Every scene shouldn't just be stupid bullshit. You may not have the dash, but you win yourself a girl if you only got a mustache. But also, every scene shouldn't just be people explaining the plot. And you know, it's like, the whole time we were together, I just remember thinking, how can I possibly be this happy? She likes me now, but one day she's going to figure out that she's too good for me. And then one day she did. I feel like I finally tricked one girl into falling in love with me, and, and then I lost her. I think you have this whole thing upside down. I mean, it sounds like you've bent over backwards for this girl, but what has she given you back? I told you, she allowed me to be happy in a part of the world that is otherwise a living hell. Allowed? Wow. That's kind of fucked up that you would use that word. You know that, right? All I know is that there is nothing for me out here if I don't have her. Can't every scene in the movie just have a point and be funny at the same time? No, that's too hard. The story is predictable, bland, and formulaic. Sorry, bud. I don't give a shit. So let's see. Seth MacFarlane is not a very charismatic hero. The more charismatic supporting characters are barely given time. The movie looks like a cheap TV show, and the story isn't compelling. But none of that shit matters if the film is funny. It's not bad, you know, it's an old west comedy. It reminds me of- It's not bad, it was hysterical! <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no tooth fairy, idiot! Now clean up that horse 
<laughs> oh, gross. This is one of the least funny films I've seen in a long time. Seth is just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. But the problem is, his turds are hard and none of it fucking sticks. It's just pellets that explode on impact and fall to the ground. See that wall? That's the wall Seth threw all his jokes at. It's clean as a whistle. From the first joke of this movie. Food was scarce, disease was rampant, and life was a daily struggle for survival. Hell, this was Miss America in 1880. Holy shit. Did I ever emphasize how important the opening to your film is? Oh yeah, I have. So if you're gonna start a comedy, please make sure that your first joke is very funny. Or at least surprising somewhat. Even the first joke in Ted is pretty funny. It was Christmas Eve, and all the children were in high spirits. That special time of year when Boston children gather together and beat up the Jewish kid. That's funny, but every joke in this movie just feels like a child wrote it. There are so many shit jokes and fart jokes, it's embarrassing. Do people still laugh at this shit? <laughs> Ow! <laughs> What the fuck am I watching? These scenes go on forever! It's like being in fucking purgatory. It just goes on of just scenes of nothing. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be laughing or not. What the fuck is this? It's okay to make fun of the West or make fun of women or black people or Asians or whatever. If you attempt to tell a racist joke and it isn't funny, then you just kind of look like a racist. If I was a black guy, this is the meanest trick you could play on me. <laughs> if you tell a sexist joke, well, it's always funny. But if it's a bad one, you have to pretend like you didn't laugh so that your girlfriend thinks you're pro-feminist, you know? And she'll <laughs> your d I thought this was the funniest thing I've seen in years. This is the definition of brilliant comedy? Did the script literally say Neil Patrick Harris shits into a hat for 20 minutes? Making people laugh is something you have to earn. I'm sorry, but even making a funny joke isn't enough. And I think that's something people don't understand. You could say a funny joke, but that's not what makes the joke funny. Who's saying it makes it funny. The context it's in it makes it funny. The environment around it, the way it's shot, all of these things are what makes a scene funny. If you have an unlikable asshole with no charisma, and he says something that's mildly funny, you don't earn a chuckle, because we don't like our hero. It's all about making the audience feel comfortable in this world. Making them feel as if they're not being pandered to. Loosen them up a little. Make them forget about their lives and prepare them for the fun they're about to have. Then they'll be more easygoing, more likely to laugh. It's what separates a suave, handsome man from a creepy, fat rapist. A handsome bachelor can catch woman's attention with the way he presents himself, the way he talks, how much money he has, his car. A creepy rapist forces you into it. That's what a million ways to die in the West is. It's a rapist. It forces you to sit there and act as if what you are watching is funny. It forces you to shut your brain off, otherwise you'll want to fucking kill yourself! That's not what a good comedy does. A good comedy doesn't hold you hostage. A good comedy makes you want to sit there and keep watching. I had no incentive to keep watching it other than to make this review of it. And if I had to take a shit, or get a ring ding, or pick up the phone, or cut my nails, or do my taxes, there would be nothing to make me want to pause the movie. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. Another pointless scene of someone farting, or belching, or taking a shit on a sheep or whatever. So Seth, try a little harder. Rely more on other people. Get other talented actors to do what you shouldn't be doing. There's nothing wrong with being proud of yourself, but your ego shouldn't hinder the quality of the movie. Because if you're a shitty pilot, the whole plane goes down with you. Right into a fucking mountain. <laughs>